SharePoint is all about information delivery. And so there are a lot of ways that you can deliver information. You can tell people things about stuff and watch what people are doing. And that's what the social features are all about. So you can use the activity feeds and news feeds to see what people are thinking and saying and doing. And you can use community sites to have discussions with lots of people. Another way that you can deliver information is to just write it down in a documentation form. And that's what wikis and publishing sites are all about. But some information is machine generated and is changing continuously, and that's what the Business Intelligence Center is for. Now, Business Intelligence Center is made up of a few different technologies, primarily performance point services, but also Excel services and Visio graphic services. Now, Excel services should not be confused with the Office web apps. Uh, you can't edit an Excel document in Excel services, although confusingly, you can have both Excel services and Office web apps going. Excel services is about publishing models and pieces of information using Excel spreadsheets as the format and then displaying them to users. Visiographic services is all about diagrams and images which can change their color and display based on the state of the information that they're connected to. So visiographic services are a great set of services if you want to make quick and dirty dashboards or key performance indicators. All right, so what we're going to do now is actually create a new business intelligence center and play around with performance point a little bit. Okay, so here we are in SharePoint Central Admin, and I'm going to go to the Create Site Collections page, and I'm going to make a new site called BI. BI stands for Business Intelligence. And this is going to use the Business Intelligence Center template. And I'm going to make my admin account here the Site Collection Administrator. And click OK. Let it create our site. All right, so now that our site's been created, let's uh, open it up. And you can see here on the home page that it's got links to the common tasks that we would need to do in our BI Center. So there's uh, a link to a guide to using Power Pivot in Excel, uh, one for designing interactive reports with Excel and Power View, and uh, one for Excel services. And there is also all kinds of good little samples here. So if we go to the site contents page and scroll down, you can see that there are actually four pages on this site. And uh, the first one we're going to look at here is the Excel services sample. And so you can see that this has a spreadsheet which has been embedded. And it's got a whole bunch of refiners. And it's nice and interactive. So we could look at uh, ready to grow and charcoal and electric push lawnmowers. And the chart updates. And we can see the historic prices. And we've got this uh, table over here to see what the sales data is. There's Lots and lots of fun information in here. And you can even see that we have uh, uh, spark lines and graphs going on inside of the spreadsheet. So this lets us, you know, as a business, actually publish information that uh, we don't have to worry about being changed. This is not, once again, uh, Office Web Apps. This is Excel Services. All right, now the next thing that we have, if we come back over to the Pages folder, is performance point services. And this will let us, once again, jump to a bunch of different help topics that tell us how to use performance point services. What I'm going to do is go over to the performance point content library. And I'm going to go to new item here or rather up here to items. And I'm going to choose a new performance point scorecard. Let's give you a taste of this. Now this is going to open up a click once .NET application, which is the performance point designer. All right, so this is going to be a standard scorecard. I'll choose OK.
Now for this to work, I need a data connection. All right, so I'm going to create a data connection to, to SharePoint. So this is going to open up a new data source, and this is going to be a SharePoint list, which I created previously in a team site, and it contains some sales data. So I need to specify the list, or rather the site that it's in. And I should point out as I'm doing this that uh, this does require some setup, which I have not shown you. Right? So there's some things I needed to do in order to make this work. Um, but this is the sales data list. And this is going to use my unattended service account, which I've specified previously as one of the, uh, the things that I haven't shown you. And if I test my data source, I can see that the connection was successful. All right, I didn't actually want this little blank template here, so I'm going to just delete that and come up here to Scorecard. And we'll make this tabular based on the SharePoint list. There we go. And there is our data connection, which I should normally give a better name than new data source. And I'll choose Next. And we'll add a KPI. And so this list, let's come over here and show you what it looks like. has just three rows in it, title of presumably things that we sell, a target, and an actual. And uh, so back over here in the dashboard designer, we're going to say that the name is target, actual is the actual field, increasing is better, and the targets is the target field. And we'll just jump through this. And we're say it's going to create this in the performance point content library. And we'll just add some formatting to this because these are currency values. And so I have this new KPI that got created. And so I can come into the format numbers here and say this one's going to be currency. And we'll have zero decimal places. And this one is going to also be currency with zero decimal places, and at this point I am ready to save this, okay? So we'll save everything. All right, so let's come back over here to performance point content and refresh the page. You can see that those items are in our library now, so to use those, what I need to do is create an actual dashboard. I could do this in the dashboards library or in the pages library. I'm going to come over here to the dashboards library and I'm going to make a new web part page in here and we'll just use full page vertical and we'll call this the sales scorecard. It's pretty Spartan, not very good scorecard, but just the same. It is a scorecard. And what I'm going to do is add a web part to this from the performance point group, and this is going to be a performance point scorecard. Let me just add this in, and now we'll edit this web part, and browse to our scorecard, and choose OK, and stop editing. And now we have this beautiful performance point scorecard. And we can even make this the home page of our site is by clicking Make Home Page and choosing OK. It's now the site home page, so if I come over here to Goes Browse and follow the link, there's our performance point scorecard. Now SharePoint is a great application development platform. In fact, this is how I make my living, is building applications on SharePoint. And at this point in 2013, there are quite a few options for how you can approach the problem. Uh, the traditional way is to build what are called farm solutions. And farm solutions are these um, packages that you actually install on a SharePoint farm. You have to be an administrator to do it. Well, when Microsoft started coming out with um, Office 365, they really wanted people to be able to build solutions that did not require an administrator and that could not mess the farm up. And so they came up with this idea called sandbox solutions. And a sandbox solution is the same kind of package as a farm solution, but it's restricted in terms of what it can do. And Microsoft came out at the time, this was in 2010, and said everybody should be building sandbox solutions. But it didn't take long before people realized that there were some real issues in terms of the restrictions that were there. 
as well as the uh, scalability and quality of the service that, that handled Sandbox Solutions. And so Sandbox Solutions are now old and busted, and they've been deprecated and replaced by this thing called SharePoint Apps. And SharePoint Apps are a completely new uh, development paradigm. They have a different kind of package altogether, and they do not allow any code to execute on the SharePoint farm itself. Still, they are very cool. If we want to build any of these, there are a variety of tools that we could use, but the tools of choice are Visual Studio 2012 and, in the cloud, a tool called Napa. So what I want to do is jump over to an Office 365 site that I've got, and I will show you the Napa tool. So here we are in a type of site called a developer site, which is running on Office 365, not a local machine. And I have already installed the Napa app. But I'll just show you how that's done. If I go to Site Contents and choose Add an App, I have the option to go to the SharePoint store. And this has all of the different apps that are available at this point in time. And the most popular one is, in fact, the Napa Office 365 development tools. So I'm not going to go through the process of installing it because it's already been installed. We'll just uh, go back to uh, our, my site here. And this time we will open up the Napa tool itself. So this takes me to a place called NapaCloud.com. And it uses part of the application or app development infrastructure uh, to display the, my name from my site. And I've got some settings that I can choose if I want to download this uh, final solution into Visual Studio, which is an option for me. In fact, a very common life cycle for apps are for people to start in Napa, kind of get the feel for what they're doing, and then pull it down into Visual Studio being aware that that is a one-way trip. So once you come down, you can't go back. Now if we come over here to add a new project, you can see that in fact there are a lot of different things that you can build inside of Napa. But we're going to look at app for SharePoint, which I have already done. So I've got this one here that I've been using for quite some time called SharePoint App 1. And when we open this up, you can see that this is a JavaScript editor. So we have a script in here called app.js, and this is using a, uh, a thing called the JavaScript object model, which existed in SharePoint 2010, but which has been expanded greatly in SharePoint 2013. And so this has a few different functions in it. It's using the jQuery library, which is a dead giveaway by the uh, dollar sign document. And it will display the username and then give us the ability to create new lists. There's a page over here called Default ASPX. And it has uh, a little initializing section. This gets uh, replaced by our JavaScript. And a button that says Get Count of Lists in the Item. And uh, a text box that we can use to create a list, and another button that we can use to delete a list. Uh, one of the most um, valuable aspects of this to me is this Properties button right here, uh, which we can use to see some of the capabilities that we have inside of an app. And I find the uh, permissions to be especially instructive. So I can see what kind of permissions I can have. And if I'm not real sure what I want to set, I can test this out in Napa and then pull it down into Visual Studio, although Visual Studio 2012 now has an excellent uh, permission setting screen as well. So you can see there's quite a bit here. What there is not is a visual designer. And it is not C-sharp code. It's JavaScript code. But once we've uh, got our app done, we actually run our project. And it packages it up and installs it on our SharePoint server. All right, so it's done. Let's just uh, open up our app in a new window. And what you see here, it's kind of hard to see in the, uh, the URL bar. So I'm going to copy this into Notepad. 
just to make it easy to read, is that it created for me this little address called cloudkite dash blah 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 dot sharepoint.com. The original site we were at was cloudkite.sharepoint.com slash site slash dev. And what it's actually doing here is creating a little isolated thing called a uh, app web. And the app web is isolated so that we can deploy these solutions into a SharePoint site without having to actually mess up the actual SharePoint site. Because this is designed so that end users, as opposed to administrators, can actually install the stuff. And like I said, it does exactly what I said. So if we click Get Count of Lists in Web, it tells me that there are two there. If I look at this dropdown, we can see that there are two there already, Composed Looks and Master Page Gallery. I could make a new list called Doug. And hopefully that worked, yeah. And there's Doug in the dropdown, and I can select Doug and delete that list. And we're back to two lists in the web. All right, so this barely scratches the surface of what you can do with Napa, but it is a great way to get started with app development for SharePoint 2013, especially if you do not have access to a virtual machine with Visual Studio.